Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to show you iCloud on iPad. I wanted to kind of make a beginner's guide to iCloud. Now some of you have asked me to actually make this guide, and so I thought it was time to kind of explain it as best I can. So iCloud is a service that Apple offers for free and for paid tiers, depending on how much storage you need, and it does a lot of different things uh, that maybe you recognize or don't even realize it's doing. So in order to see some of those settings, we first need to go into settings. Once we're in settings, we find iCloud on the left here, and you can see there's my name, there's my iCloud account, I have family set up, which means my wife and my children, and you can add or delete from that. We also have a bunch of different options here, obviously it's telling us our storage, and then we have some advanced things at the bottom, and we can sign out. So if you have an iPad, and you want to move from an old one to a new one. I've done a separate video on that and same for iPhone, but this will allow you to back up all of these different things that are turned on. So here we have iCloud Drive, and iCloud Drive is backing up all of these different things, or at least allowing these programs to use iCloud Drive, which means basically they're storing saved games, storing different files, for example, numbers and pages, which is like Word and Excel. It's actually saving those documents to the cloud. I can access them here. I can access them on my iPhone or my MacBook or even a Windows computer if I just log in through the interface on iCloud.com. So it's a really handy tool. It lets me get to that everywhere. Here we have photos, photos, same thing. Now it's going to back up photos and you can ask it to back up all of your photos. So you can see it says, this is a beta. So this is all of your photos, it's turned off. And at the time I didn't have the storage for this. So it says automatically upload and store your entire library to iCloud to access photos and videos from all of your devices. If you have this turned on, you'll probably want to upgrade to a different tier of storage. And I'll show you that in a moment. So you can see iCloud photo library beta, if I switch it to on, it will back up everything. And that means every photo, every video. With it off, it will back up about a thousand photos and not your videos. You can see there's also upload burst photos and iCloud photo sharing. iCloud photo sharing allows me to share my photos that are stored here with other people that I know. So those are all of those options. Let's get out of that. Obviously mail, it's going to sync all of my mail between the devices, store some of those settings. Same for contacts, same for calendars, reminders, Safari, notes, all the same. Safari has a really neat option as well. If I go home, go to Safari, you can see I was looking at some monitors and looking up some words. But here you can see on my iPhone 6, which I'm actually recording this video with, on the Zolo's iPad mini, you can see these are all the different sites that I might have open on that device, or I do have open. And then on my MacBook Pro, you can see all of these different things. So I was looking up the hung Hunger Games, Movie Times, and if I wanna go to those, I can just tap on it and go to that. Let me go back. So that's what leaving the Safari bookmarks on does. Now here we have backup, and why backup is off, I'm not really sure. So I'm going to turn that on and that's going to automatically back up this device. Uh, I'm not really sure why it was off. I've, I've actually had it on to begin with, so that's nice that I've done this video and found that. So in backup, again here it says automatically backup data such as your photo library, accounts, documents, health data, home kit. Basically, that's how you can delete the iPad and restore the whole thing back just like you had it. That means the whole thing, just how it looks here, your wallpaper, your apps, and these configurations, Everything will be exactly the same once you restore it. Now, it will take time to do that, but once you're on Wi-Fi, it will restore just by signing into this account. Now, Keychain is another thing. Uh, I'm not going to show you my Keychain because that stores all of my passwords. So, say I go to a website and sign into that website. It could be iCloud.com. Go to sign in. I say, do you, I want, I want it to remember my password. It remembers the password. And then I go to my Mac and I go to sign into the same website, it actually asks me if I want to autofill that password information. So I can just do that. And this syncs this across all the, the devices that I have, and it's encrypted. So shouldn't be a problem there. There's also advanced options such as your phone number and security codes it can send you as well. On the very bottom here, you can see Find My iPad. I always use Find My iPad, 
and let's turn this on send last location so find my ipad this is handy in a couple different scenarios same with your phone if you lose your phone you can go locate it you can just go to icloud.com or go to another ios device such as your iphone or another ipad or something sign in with your icloud account and find where your phone or your ipad is or whatever you have even your mac it will let you locate it you can also do a couple other things you can not only locate it using the find my iphone app but you can send it a noise so say maybe you misplaced it within your own home but you don't know where it is well you can tell it to alert you and that's in find my iphone the app you can also erase it if you need to uh, or set it as stolen we also have mail and share my location and mail just syncs your mail accounts share my location allows you to share your location with friends so if you're using find my friends like i do i share my location with my family you don't have to do that but that's an option to do that as well so that's part of icloud so these are all of the different settings of icloud but in theory how do you actually access the information is a little bit different this also does not back up your music unless you bought it from iTunes so if you bought your music from iTunes you get a new device you can just go to your new device and download that music also if you have iTunes and you pay for uh, an additional service you can actually use the iTunes match service that matches your entire library and then stores it for you across all your different signed-in devices now the last thing I want to talk about under settings here is storage you can see I have 12.7 gigabytes available and total storage I pay for the 25 gigabyte plan which is a dollar a month I believe available 7.2 change storage plan so if we need more storage we can do that and you can see here's all the different tiers so it's not the cheapest storage but it's super convenient for sure so if we needed all that storage and we wanted to store all of our photos eh, we might need one of these higher plans we can also downgrade as well we can also manage our storage here so this will show us what's actually backed up so you can see all of these different things are backed up and how much they're using so this is this iPad this is actually the previous iPad Air I had that I moved to from this one and I can just delete this if I want or it can show me how much is backed up so it's really nice you've got all that different options and all those different things now iCloud itself in theory should be pretty seamless you basically update things such as documents we can go right here to pages and we'll update a document here and this is my new document we can type here and what it will do is upload to the cloud any of these changes so you could put a period you could make some changes and then go to another device running iOS that's yours with your iCloud account and actually see these documents and any changes that have been made so you can see it says blank three and we should have my iPad Air 1 here if we go over to this we should be able to view the same document in theory so let's see if it updated and you can see right there it just came through and it's taking a moment so when it allows me to edit it we'll go out you can see it's the same exact configuration and it's probably updating you can see it just said updated we'll go here and we have the exact same document now if I make a change on this iPad it will carry over here so we can say hello again and eventually it will come over to here so it just takes some time to do that uh, sometimes it's quick sometimes it's not but in general it works pretty well you can see it says updating one document and it's just text so it should be pretty quick so you can see it just updated here and now it says hello again and that was in real time so you get an idea of how quickly that actually transitions from device to device now again all of those iCloud changes carry over to any of the Apple apps and any other app that's allowed to use iCloud so if you're using a different app such as podcasts it will carry over your podcasts if you're using an app that's anything that's using iCloud it should carry over to that new app and it's really handy you can use Pixelmator the same way uh, iBooks any of that so really it's designed to be this one simple seamless stop that takes everything on your iPad and moves it over including text messages and videos and photos if everything's turned on but you've got to have the storage to do that I use it often for notes I'll put a note on my iPhone and then it will carry over to my iPad or my Mac and I can use it later so that's really the whole idea behind iCloud is one seamless solution that integrates everything together 
into what Apple calls continuity. And there's a lot of other things going on too, but we won't go into that right now. That hopefully gives you a better idea of what iCloud is and what it's capable of. And hopefully gives you just a basic understanding of what it really does. There's so many more things it actually can do and hopefully will be used for in the future, but I thought I'd just show you that to begin with. So if you have any other questions or comments or would like to see other videos like this to help you better understand how to use your devices, please let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, comment, and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.